What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to my 2024 Spyderco Knives tier list. I have a ton of very recognizable Spyderco Knives that I'm going to be uh, ranking here. Anywhere from Legend to Poo Poo Town as you can see on the far left. Uh, this is going to be much like the last one where I rank it as a design and how enjoyable it is to carry, or at least how I think it would be to carry, because I've not carried all of these. This is mostly just for fun, so don't take this too seriously. Um, I, uh, I really enjoy doing these ranking videos, and I know that you guys enjoy watching them. So I don't have every single Spyderco knife out here, um, and it's largely because many Spyderco knives are discontinued, but I have a lot of them that you guys will recognize. Most of the knives in this tier list are available, so I will link Spyderco knives in the description. You guys can check them out if you want. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, let's start off here with a, uh, a recognizable one. What should we start off here? Probably, let's go with the uh, Endura. It's my best guess. It's going to be hard to remember all these. Holy moly, I went back through and tested myself, and it's really hard. It's really hard to remember all the names. The Endura's all right. I don't, I don't love lockbacks, but it is a good knife. It's going to be hard for me to rank any of these low because Spyderco makes so many great knives. I'm going to put that under Glad It Exists. That's about the best I can do there. How about the Spyderco Manix 2 XL? I'm going to put that automatically in huge win. It is definitely one of the best large American Spyderco knives out there. Love the blade geometry. Love the look of it. Love the lock, etc. How about the Sliverax? God, that's a weird one. It's cool. We don't have a lot of Spyderco flipper knives. So, I, in a way, I'm kind of glad it exists, right? I mean, personally, I... I I'm going to put, oh God, it's hard to put, you know what? I'm going to switch and put the Sliverax as glad it exists and I'm going to put the Endura under meh. I think that's, that's a better way to do that. How about the Gale Bradley 2? That's a huge win. The only thing holding that back from legend, truthfully, is the fact that the liner access is not absolutely magnificent. Um, how about the... Is that the Lil Native? Is that what this is? I think it's the Lil Native. Eh, I'm gonna put that under. I'm gonna put that under Meh. Eh, I'm gonna put that. No. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Meh. I'm gonna go with Meh. Let's do um the Sage Five Liner. The Sage Five Liner Lock version is definitely a huge win. Definitely, I, I very much enjoy that knife. Um, and you know if I can find it. Maybe we'll have to come back to it. Is this it right here? Yeah, this is the compression lock version. And truthfully, I think the compression lock version is slightly better. I think this is one of the most underrated Spyderco knives ever. I know a lot of people are like, what? What is wrong with you, you psychopath? Putting that, if, if I'm correct, and that's the, uh, that's the Sage 5 um, compression lock version. I know there's a lot. Don't get too hung up on lightweight and G10. I just grabbed the picture, right? So it kind of spans the whole model. And I understand I'm separating liner lock and compression lock version, which is not the case with every knife on this list. But both of these are popular for different reasons. The liner lock version, some people swear by it. The compression lock, some people swear by it. I'm going to put the compression lock version up there under legend. Absolutely. Let's do the native chief. The native chief is cool. I'm just, again, it's hard for me to love lockbacks, truthfully. Canis. I know this is going to be bizarre for a lot of people, but I'm going to put the Canis, actually, I'm going to put the Canis under Glad It Exists. It's cool. I like it. I'm not the biggest fan of the compound blade overall, but it is definitely a great knife. Um, Smock. Boy. Is Smock legendary tier? Is it? Mm, mm, mm. That's a real hard one. I'm, you know what? I'm going to come back to that one. Python. A lot of people are going to hate me for this. The only thing that sucks about the Python, the only thing, I mean, people are going to say price, right? Price is not a huge factor in this ranking list. I'm really just focusing on the design, how much I like it, right? I'm going to put the Python under legend with an asterisk that obviously the lock stick thing is a huge problem. And obviously, of course, the price, we're ignoring price. Um, I'm going to ignore lock stick and just pretend <laughs> if the lock stick wasn't an issue, which is something that I truly believe if they just make any little bit of effort, it can fix it. The Python is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. It's such a cool design. 
The pocket clip is not my favorite thing in the world, but I do. I personally, I consider that a legendary knife. It's just a personal letdown. Well, it's not personal. It's everybody that has ever owned it and had lock stick issues says the same thing. The this is a weird one. The Rock or R O C. I that's a Serge Pinch. Is that Serge Pinchenko? Um, I'm gonna put that under man. <laughs> Personally. Oh boy, let's do the matriarch. The Spiderco matriarch, all right? That's great for cutting open, you know, if somebody's wearing Kevlar body armor or just a really heavy duty jean jacket and are trying to attack you outside of Walgreens. That's about the most ideal. Yeah, that is a poo poo town. I hate, look at this. Look at this freaking just goofy, like, it, it's like a. a it's like a plague doctor that needs braces. It's awful. Oh, I don't like that at all. If you like that, that's perfectly fine. My, uh, I'm not suggesting that my tier list should be accepted universally. Um, and a lot of this is just based on kind of a knee-jerk reaction to the look of it. I do not like that matriarch. I hate that knife. Spider knives in general are kind of hard to choke down in terms of their designs. Um... But uh, that one in particular I don't like. The Subvert, that gigantic folding machete Shane Cyber design, I am glad that exists. I can't call it a huge W, and it is a little bit inconvenient, I think, to carry. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not my favorite thing in the whole world. Valaton Subhilt, also going to put that under glad it exists. That's a wild one that has the dual action. I think maybe they make a manual one that's not dual action, but that's like a dual action automatic and manual that is super cool and i'm glad it exists i think the cool factor on that one's off the charts i don't know that i would love carrying it spider coast smock i'm going to go ahead and put under huge w and i know a lot of people are going to be pissed off and say that should be legend that's fine listen anything from glad it exists up like you can pretty much like that means i like it a lot right i just like them more as we climb up um, the Akuchi, I'm going to put that under no thanks. I'm just, it's fine. It's okay. It's just, that's a, it's not a bad model. It's not a poo-poo town model. I'm just not in love with it, right? Um, the Amalgam, the Amalgam is also interesting because it is a compression lock and flipper, which is wild. I am glad that one exists. I think that one's slightly underrated. Let's put something else under S tier, the Spyderco Shaman. The Spyderco Shaman, uh, I know people are mad about the price tag on that one, um, but the Spyderco Shaman is legitimately like one of my favorite pocket knives of all time. I hate that they are suddenly trying to justify like $280 for the price tag, but oh my gosh. I remember, I remember guys, I, I was complaining about the $180 price tag when I saw it bump from $155 to $185 way back in the day, which by the way was like four years ago. Uh, yeah, now it's a hundred dollars more, but w the design itself is so wonderful. And it's, you know, <laughs> it's one of the best looking Spydercos out, out there for sure. The Brower also a uh, kind of an underrated knife. I, I really like that one. Um, I'm going to call that one a huge W, which I know a lot of people might think is weird. That's what I'm going to call it. The Drunken. That's a meh. That's a meh for me. Um, I know a lot of people really like that one. It's, it's hard because a lot of, a lot of people watching this right now, I, like I made this video knowing that I'm going to make a lot of people mad, right? That's, that's just a risk I'm willing to take and have been willing to take for the last six years on YouTube. Um, it's just not, I just don't find it all that appealing. Um, and I don't really like the overall shape of it. And honestly, on that note, which will probably get a, an enormous number of people to drop off, um, also, the Spidey Chef is meh for me, and that's going to be a big one, right? This might not only get you to stop watching the video, you might unsubscribe uh, to me for that one, but I just, I don't, I'm not in love with it. It's okay, it's fine. You like it, right? It's fine. Stovepipe, I'm also going to kind of put that one under meh, and I got to be honest here, I, I do kind of like the look, but I remember gripping that thing for the first time and being like, oh, why is it so... Is that a Kingdom Armory collab, right? I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. I kind of do. I like the look of this one more than this one. So very specifically, the only reason that this one's ranking higher than these two here is because I like the look of it better. That That's it. That's all it is, right? Is this a Siren? I'm also glad that one exists. I don't, I'm not going to call it a huge win. I don't love, of the backlock knives, I think that's one of the ones that I like a little bit more. I think it's cool that it's LC200N, and I know a lot of people who work around water really appreciate that one. 
um, but it's just not my absolute favorite. I'm gonna be honest with you here. I'm looking at these and I can't tell which one is the XL and which one. It's the Yojimbo 2 and the Yojumbo. And I can't remember. I'm gonna say that this black one here because it fits more in frame is the Yojimbo 2. Uh, either way, both the Yojimbo 2 and the Yojumbo, I'm gonna put under huge win. I love those knives. They are, I think a lot of people consider them to be some of the ugliest Spyderco knives out there. Um, if you hold those things and operate them with the compression lock, they are just beautifully easy to manipulate. And honestly, the blade is super utilitarian. I think that those are actually designed partially as self-defense knives, which I know absolutely nothing about and I won't pretend to know a whole lot about. But I do like them as carry knives. Um, the Techno 2, it's it's all right. It's kind of I feel the same way about it. I, I think maybe I like it slightly better than the Drunken or the uh, Spidey Chef, but... It's just not a spectacular, it's okay, right? It's, I mean, it's just meh. It's kind of nothing. The Capara, wow. Um, the Capara is everything that I like about the um, the Spyderco PM2, but I think better. Um, as a Spyderco knife in general, uh, you know, I'm realizing up here that this might actually be the Para 3 lightweight. <laughs> Do we have do we have something else down here that would, looks more like the compression lock version? So, oh no, the Para 3 is right here. Okay, boy, the Para 3 looks really similar to the, um, from a long ways off. I believe that this is the Sage 5 compression lock. I'm going to put the Para 3 under S tier also. Um, and truthfully, I prefer the Spyderco Para 3 to the PM2. But I do think that the PM2 also deserves an S tier rank in the context of Spyderco knives specifically. I can't remember where I ranked it overall in that last video, right? Um, I'm also truthfully going to put the Capara up here under S tier. I think that is, oh, you can see a, a trend here, I think, with the, the appearance of these. Um, let's move on. Is this the Mantra? That's also a flipper. I'm going to put that one under meh. Right? Manix 2. Boy, I can't not put. The Manix 2 is also kind of S tier. Look at this. <laughs> it's so hard for me to like rent. I love the Manix 2. I, I absolutely love it. I can't not put it there. Um, is this the Polestar? So the Polestar, I think, is kind of a super underrated sub $100 Spider Co. I'm honestly going to put the Polestar under huge win. CTS BD1 is the steal there, and it's not amazing, but I do like it more than ATR 13 MOV, um, and I think it's better than the... I think it's a better choice for a lot of people versus the Tenacious. Uh, the Tenacious is all right, and I know I've got it down here, right here. Um, I'm, I'm going to put the Tenacious under Glad It Exists. It's good, but I like the... I can't sit here and pretend that I like it the same as the Polestar, right? I just don't. So now, what is this? Is this the, uh, maybe that's the, um, <laughs> there's one of these that's very confusing. <laughs> the dragonfly is going to go under meh. No. The dragonfly is going under no thanks, and I remember this specifically. It's not a bad knife. I don't like the ergonomics on this. I know Nick Shabazz just sh absolutely swears by the dragonfly and the Delica, and the Delica is a meh knife for me. Um, and the, like the overall design, I have a titanium one in Damascus and that one in particular, I like much more, but this knife is such a blah knife to me. It's like Spyderco's bug out and I just don't love it. Um, I believe that this is the native five right here, right? So you'll have to consider how, what I'm calling these. Let's go with Native 5 under huge win. The only thing that I don't like about it is the back lock. It's, it's a fantastic small. It's probably my favorite back lock knife from Spyderco. Um, this is the Military 2 in the compression lock. And truthfully, I haven't handled it. And it's the, the reason that I am going to rank it the same as the regular Military is because I just don't really know. I have to assume I would like it more than the standard Military um, just because it has the compression lock. I'm going to put it under Glad It Exists for now, right? In the same note, this is the new Bodacious. Listen, I'm just going to guess. It looks so plain and underwhelming, right? And people are like, oh my God, super boring. What are they even doing? It's exactly what everybody said about the Shaman, including me, right? I'm going to guess the Bodacious is going to be at least a huge win. It might be like, you know, everybody's favorite spider knife of all time. The Swayback, I'm going to put under meh. 
It's okay. I don't love the look of it. I think it's fine, right? What is the is the the autonomy too? I'm definitely glad the autonomy too exists. I think that's a cool knife. I'm not going to say it's a, a huge win or anything like that. The ambitious. Uh, I just don't, I'm not. I, I no thanks. It's not for me. The ambitious is not really for me. The resilience is this the large? Yeah, I've got the lightweight one version here, and I think that that is pro. That's a good option for people who want a large more budget friendly spider coat it doesn't a true budget friendly spider coat doesn't really exist because their materials are so lackluster in that territory for people who just really can't justify the money on like a crazy super nice american spider co like this is what their options are if spider co had like legitimately good options that were under 50 bucks it would be a lot easier to appreciate them and by I, I need them under 50 bucks and like with materials that are good not 8 cr 13 mov which spider co seems to love right so, yeah, that's how I'm ranking them there. This mysterious guy, which, you know, I'm realizing here we have the Sage 5 uh, liner lock. This has to be the Chaparral, right? Uh, it's okay. I'm glad it exists. It, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. So, of the 43 knives that I have here, this is my ranking. I don't hate... Any spider, there, I mean, okay, here's the thing. If we went way back in time and I pulled um, from spider co knives that were long, long discontinued, I can promise you there would be a ton more down here in Poo Poo Town because some of those old spider co's were, they were horrific. They were super ugly looking and um, the ergonomic lines that define modern spider co knives were just, they didn't exist in the same way on the older knives and they just weren't great. Um, I've handled some older spider coves, uh, and a lot of them were not only ugly, just ridiculously uncomfortable. Pocket clips made no sense. Uh, they were appealing to a weird subgenre of tactical crowd that was even more specific than it is today. Like today, I think they cater to a lot of like regular, just EDC loving folks, right? But Spider Co was a weird brand um, a ways back, and a lot of those knives I really hated. So, um, just doing semi knee jerk, but a little more specific this time than the previous list that I did last weekend. This is kind of how I rank them, and I, I'm realizing that most most spider co knives are just meh at best or at worst, right? Um, like these are the but but everything here and up I I love, especially the ones on top. The ones on top are true. Like I'm giving them S tier, and I know a lot of people. The one that they really disagree with me on is the is the Python because number one, it's so expensive. And you don't need it, it to be integral. And sometimes the bevel, the cutting bevel is not even, and it's got a lock stick issue. But that's personally, that's me. I just love the Python. I, I love the Peter Rizenti uh, original design. And I think it translates really well to a, a spider car. I think it's one of the most beautiful spider car knives out there. It just has issues, right? So, um, but a lot of these, I think here, and especially here, well, these two rows, I think a lot of them could be interchangeable. A lot of people would switch around a lot of these rows, right? And I know a lot of people specifically with the Spidey Chef are really going to condemn me for that. But hey, I got to be honest, right? This was fun to do. Um, I want to do br more brand specific stuff. Uh, I want to do um, locking system specific stuff. Uh, there's, there's a lot we could do with this. Um, and at some point it would be fun to do a much larger spider coat tier. Um, but I just haven't handled everything. A couple of knives on this, on this particular list, I haven't even handled. So I, ha I kind of had to guess like with the bodacious, but truthfully, um, I think that's going to be pretty much it. Like I said, I will link these down in the description and I'll also link my favorites directly. Um, so that you guys can just, you know, have quick access to those knives. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love making these tier list videos. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.